viewers welcome to the subject data warehousing and data mining our today's topic is the a priori principle so uh, earlier to that we have been uh, seen how the association root mining has been created what is the history of that after that uh, how the a priori principle came so for that we will uh, see what is there for that myself priyanka gupta i am working as a assistant professor in department of computer science and engineering data science department at institute of aeronautical engineering hyderabad our today's topic will be association rule mining overview uh, as we have already covered this uh, topic but we'll see a quick review of that what was there in the association rule mining we will cover the basic concepts and a road map of the a priori algorithm we'll see what is the history of the a priori algorithm the a priori algorithm steps how many steps are there and what are the steps we have to do during the a priori algorithm while well, to do while well, to uh, take a frequent item set and we'll see after that one example for that let us start so uh, association rule mining for that there will be the frequent uh, patterns there will be the frequent patterns we will see what are the associations and correlations will be there so the frequent pattern are patterns such as item set subsequence substructures that appear in a data set that appear in a data set but as frequently for example a set of items such as uh, if we will take a example of a milk and a bread so in milk and uh, a bread that appear frequently together while we are going to purchase a milk there will be the frequency there will be the probability we are going to purchase the bread together with so in in a one transaction there will be the frequently purchasing history of milk and what is that bread right so that will be the frequent item set that uh, we call as a frequent item set so a frequent i pattern is nothing but it is a it is a item set or we can say it is a subsequence it is a substructure in that uh, the data set that will be the That that is going to be occur frequently while a uh, customer is going to purchase a item from the store, right? So there was an example for that. While we are going to purchase a um, purchase milk, uh, the probability that we are going to purchase bread also together with that in one transaction. So what is subsequence? A subsequence. Uh, such as uh, buying first a pc for example if you are going to buy a pc then a digital camera then we are going to buy digital camera then we are going to buy a memory card so if uh, there will be the uh, occurrence of frequently in in the shopping uh, for the database so that will be the subsequential pattern there will be the subsequential pattern so that will be the subsequence so if uh, if a uh, probability of one item set is going to depend on to the two or three consequences subsequences so that will be the uh, subsequent uh, frequently subsequence frequent subsequence of the data base so what is substructure what is frequent substructure a frequent substructure can refer to different structure form so what is different structure form such as we can say subgraphs subtrees and sub lattices so in this these are the three forms there can be the possibility which can be combined with item sets which can be combined with item sets or we can say it can be combined with subsequences so if a sub structure uh, that is going to occur frequently so uh, we are going to call it as a frequent sub structure frequent sub structure for the 
pattern so uh, these type of different uh, uh, structural forms they, they, uh, together it if it is occurring that we call as a frequent sub structure so finding such frequent patterns these are these three types of frequent patterns we uh, the frequent pattern plays a important role so if we are going to find frequent items frequent uh, patterns that 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 is uh, play a important role for that so uh, while when when we are going to mine when we are going to do data mining when we are going to uh, uh, check for the when we are going to search for the correlations when we are going to find the associations and many other interesting relationship among the data set among the data what are the different uh, uh, we can say uh, relationships are there if uh, we have to find out that so we need to find out the frequent patterns for that so that is very very important while we are going to do data mining so moreover it it is going to help in the data classification so the frequent patterns that is going to help in the classification of data that is going to help in the clustering as well as the other data mining tasks so that is very very important uh, subject so thus the frequent patterns mining has become an important data mining task so and they, that will be focused uh, focused theme for the data mining research so the data mining researchers they are also uh, working on the frequent patterns also so that is very very important while we are going to do a research so we need to understand about the frequent patterns frequent subsequences frequent substructures so uh, before that uh, before going to do mining before going to do uh, apply some of the algorithm before uh, mining something we need to know about the frequent item sets frequent subsequences frequent substructures so uh, what are the basic concepts for that the frequent pattern mining searches for the recurring relationships for the given data set so if there is a data set there is a warehouse from that uh, if somebody have to mine frequent pattern uh, mining so he is going to he is going to search about that and for the recurring relationships in that between the data so that is uh, that has been occurred uh, that has been obtained by the some of the mining uh, tools and some of the mining algorithms so this section of the uh, lecture is going to introduce about the basic concepts of the frequent pattern mining for the discovery of interesting association what are the different associations are there and as well as correlations are there between the item sets in the transactional and relational type of data sets data bases so in these two types of databases we are going to take some of the data sets and on that uh, if uh, we have to mine the frequent patterns so we have to understand about the we have to search for the interesting correlations interesting associations between the data right so between the data uh, we can say the item sets so because of the frequent frequent patterns there will be the frequent item sets so we will search for item sets there so a typical example for the frequent item set can be a market basket analysis market basket analysis so as in the earlier example of the milk and bread we have seen the if uh, if we are going to purchase the milk there uh, there will be the probability we are going to purchase the uh, bread also we are going to purchase the butter also we are going to purchase the uh, different jams also so there will be the correlation between them so that that is nothing but there is a market that is called as a market basket analysis so in the in the business terms there is a term market basket analysis to search for the frequent item sets so this process of the uh, 
फ्रीक्वेंट आइटम सेट दैट इज गोइंग टू एनालाइज कस्टमर बिहेवियर कस्टमर बाइंग हैबिट्स सो वॉट इट विल डिपेंड वॉट आर दिहेवियर आर देयर फॉर द डिफरेंट कस्टमर्स सो we need to study about the different customers for that so by finding association between the different items and then the customers uh, they are going to place a shopping basket they are going to purchase for the uh, some other items they are going to add in the basket or uh, they are going in to add in the, the cart so what is the pattern of that uh, in uh, uh, for the analysis we are going to study the uh, customer behavior for that so in this figure we can see uh, in this figure of market basket analysis there is a person market analyst right so he is thinking about which of the items are frequently purchased by the customer that is going uh, what are the different items are there the customer is purchased together so he is thinking about that if there is a customer 1 2 3 and 4 uh, so on so uh, if the customer 1 is uh, purchasing the for example he is purchasing the milk he is purchasing bread and cereal with that right in the shopping basket uh, for the customer 2 he if he is suppose he as he is uh, purchasing the milk he is going he as he is going to purchase the bread sugar and eggs with that cart right so in the other for the other customer 3 if the person if the customer is going to purchase the milk he is obviously going to purchase the bread and butter uh, for the customer n he is going to purchase the sugar then he is going to purchase the egg so there were the some items added into the shopping baskets by the different customers so the as a market analyst for the market analyst he have to search about the what are the probability the customer is going to purchase two of the three of the items together so for that he have to understand about the different customers behavior so for that he have to get some of the frequent uh, uh, customers data then he will be able to know about the different buying habits of the customer so for example if we have taken these of the uh, this example so for the customer 1 2 and 3 if the customer is going to buy a milk he is obviously going to buy the bread because the bread is uh, there in the three of the baskets there is that is no, uh, not in to the last basket so right so that is the frequent uh, frequent occurrence of the one item with the other item he have uh, the customer have purchased so on the basis of that the market analyst he have to analyze the uh, behavior of the different customers so mini mining algorithm are there for to do that frequent item sets uh, generation so there are a large in number of uh, algorithm are there they use different strategy they use different data structures to find out these type of uh, frequency of the frequent patterns so their resulting set of rules can be same they can be same but uh, given a transaction data set t and a minimum support and a minimum confidence the set of association rules existing in the transaction data set t can be uniquely determined so um, for the definition that is there the uh, if there is a data set t so there will be the a minimum confidence a minimum uh, support so a set of these association rule can be applied onto the data set so uh, uh, for that um, uh, in the previous uh, lecture we have seen what is the support what is the confidence for that uh, what what is the minimum support what is the minimum confidence we are going to uh, uh, take from the formula so how it will depend on to the uh, different data sets how we have to obtain these of the minimum confidence and minimum support from the different data sets so for example if any algorithm um, is going to find the same set of rule right 
the same algorithm is going to find the same set of rules although their computational efficiency as well as the memory requirement can be different so obviously there will be the set of uh, uh, like there will be the set of examples right for that but they can follow the different rules for the different algorithm so for that there can be the differentiations there can be the uh, uh, probability there will be the efficiency difference and there will be the memory allocation difference can be there for that so for that we are going to study the uh, first algorithm that is one the a priori algorithm so the a priori algorithm so the a priori is a seminal algorithm that is proposed by the r agrawal as well as with the r srikant in 1994 so they both have proposed this seminal algorithm for the mining frequent item sets of the boolean association rules so they have uh, uh, proposed this uh, algorithm for the boolean association rules so the name of the algorithm is based on the fact that the algorithm uses the prior knowledge of the frequent item set property so what does it means there is a uh, there is a frequent uh, knowledge of the these of the item sets we are going to apply this algorithm on that so first we have to uh, uh, take some of the frequent item set on that only the algorithm is going to be applied so uh, there are the frequent uh, item set property so the first property says that employs the an iterative approach so the a priori employs an iterative approach that is known as a level wise search so which for which k item sets are used to explore so uh, the user is going to search for the k item sets there can be the one item set there there can be the two item set and many more so the one item set first the set of frequent item set will be found by the scanning of the database so on the first step we have to scan for the one item set after that two item set after that three item set like that we have to search for the different item sets from the data set or database so for that we have to accum uh, accumulate the count for each of the item so for that we have to count what are the different item sets for, uh, is there in the database or data set for one item set as a one item set there can how many data set uh, data items are there as a two item set like that we have to accumulate the count for that and that and then we have to collect the those of the items that satisfy minimum support so we have to set a minimum support for that uh, we can uh, learn about the what is the minimum support in the earlier lectures so we have to set a minimum support for that data set and then we have to uh, we have to satisfy this uh, what we have set the uh, what we set the minimum set uh, support are there if we have set what is the minimum support is 50 so we have to collect that item set and we have to compare these of the item set with the minimum support which have, we have set as the 50% if uh, that satisfy that the item will be there right so like that uh, we have to uh, we have to be satisfy these of the few uh, uh, examples properties in the second we have uh, then we will get the resulting set of item sets and then that will be denoted as l1 first for the first scan that will be denoted as l1 for first scan if we are going uh, we are doing this for the one uh, for the one item set right so for that that will be the l1 scan then after that the, there will be the l2 scan like that so for the uh, l1 scan next l1 will be used and find the l2 then Uh, l2 uh, l2 is going to find the l3 so which is used to find the l3 and so on like that so until no more frequent set will be there so we have to search as a 
usual for the item set if there is a possibility there will be the how many item sets are there if there that there will be not that so we have to stop the uh, scan for uh, on that database so if that uh, the item set can be found the finding of each of the l scans requires one full scan of the database so for l1 we have to search for the uh, one item sets in the whole of the database right so name of the algorithm pre, a priori the, uh, is there because of the uh, prior knowledge of the frequent item set property right so to improve uh, the efficiency to improve the uh, what is the we call what uh, how efficient our uh, item sets are we have to do the level wise generation of the frequent item sets so an important property that is going to call as a a priori property so in uh, that uh, one uh, lecture is uh, dedicated to the a priori property what are the different a priori properties are there so we uh, we can uh, see that uh, lecture for that for to know what are the different a priori property are there so to improve the efficiency of level wise generation of frequent data items frequent item set and the uh, uh, this is the property is used as a a priori property which is going to help by reducing the minimum search space so that is going to help for the we have to use the minimum search space for that probably the uh, we can say that this is the best known algorithm that is the a priori algorithm the a priori algorithm the, that is for improved efficiency and as well as the scalability methods for the mining frequent item sets so that uh, unlike we can say a priori do don't involve the generation of frequent item set so in that we don't have to uh, generate the frequent item set that will be there already we, uh, on that only the a priori algorithm uh, as a um, analyst we have to apply we have to apply on that so there will be the two steps for that how we are going to do that the first the all item sets that have the minimum support we have to search for the minimum support for the frequent item set that also call as a large item set so we have to find the minimum item support for the item set second we have to use the frequent item set to generate some of the association rules so these were the two steps will be followed for to do the uh, a priori algorithm to search for the a priori algorithm suppose there is an example for uh, if there is a frequent item set there is a, there is a data set there is a item set chicken clothes and milk these, these are the three items are there in one basket so what will be the probability uh, to uh, for the uh, what will be the support for that so the support will be for that is the 3 by 7 3 is the count of the different item set divided by total number of uh, uh, item sets are there in the basket so and one rule uh, that has been applied as a uh, frequent item set that is clothes if uh, somebody is going to purchase clothes that that is going to purchase that depends milk and chicken so and what is the support for that the support is 3 by 7 and confidence is 3 by 3 so from the earlier lectures we can learn about how we are going to calculate the support and confidence so these are the two uh, associations uh, association rules are there on uh, behalf of that we can uh, count the support and confidence for the different item sets so first steps was there mining all the frequent item sets from the database so a frequent item set is a sub item set who is going to support is that is greater than or equal to minimum support so the frequent item set will what will be the frequent item set if the item set is uh, greater than and equal to the minimum support of the data sets so in the first uh, step we are going to mine the all the frequent item sets so for that we have to we have to search for the frequent item set 
that is greater than and equal to the minimum support of the database so first we have to set the minimum support for the all the database then we have to compare uh, if the frequent item set is there when the uh, if this this will be set this condition will be satisfied if the frequent item set will occur in a database when it is greater than and less than the minimum support this is minimum support so we have to set the minimum support and uh, before that we have to get the all the frequent set and if the condition will uh, satisfy then only the frequent item set will be there so the key idea for that is the a priori property is there downward closure property so this is the one property that is closure property in that the any subset of any item, frequent item set are also the frequent item set so in this example uh, of the data set, uh, data items there is abc abd acd bcd so these are the different item set on uh, from that they have scanned as a a b a c a d b c b d and c d so the, uh, that has depend on to the a b d uh, item sets so on that uh, the the history is the a b c d item set is there one, as a one item set so there is a subsequence of closure uh, subsequence of frequent item sets uh, here we have to check for the subset of the item set so that the subset is also will be the uh, frequent item set if there, there will be the first item set as a uh, frequent item set so in this example of finding frequent item set if uh, uh, there is a table there is a transaction id this is the transaction id transaction id and this is the column items so for the transaction t100 the items are there in the table 1 2 1 3 4 for the second t2 200 transaction there is a items 2 3 5 for t300 1 2 3 5 for t400 uh, 2 5 so If from this we have if we, we have to set the minimum support we are going to uh, set the minimum support as a 50% minimum support as a 50% that is 0.5 so in this data set t transaction data set t the items count we have to scan in first scan so in the first scan for uh, transaction transaction of data the scan will be we have to set the candidate key candidate key for the each of the items so here what is the probability uh, for uh, c1 there is 1 2 1 2 2 3 3 3 4 1 and 5 3 right so for that in the uh, for frequent uh, generation what are the frequent keys are there there, uh, there is a probability 2 3 3 3 that is occurring Uh, regularly so for the last uh, for the last candidate key generation 1 2 1 3 1 5 2 3 2 5 and 3 5 so from the first scan of for the all the uh, transaction ids we have to search for that we have to search for what are the different item set that is occurring in a as a uh, two set first we have to find the one set what are the difference uh, items is occurring uh, regularly so here we can see first is occurring uh, in t3 first is occurring first as a two occurrence right as two two uh, two that is occurring two is occurring one two three times three times three that is occurring one two three three times four that is occurring one one only five that is occurring three times so like that first we have to search for that first first we have to scan for that from the this uh, of the data set so like that we have scan next we have to we have to search for what are the different uh, frequent items frequent items that is more than 50% that are more than 50% so we will exclude the uh, the four item set that is that occurs only one time so we will uh, we will not consider that 
other we have considered because there is a uh, th this is 2, 3, 3, 3 times, 3 times. So, they are occurring 3 times. That is more than 50%. Okay. So, for the four, uh, five, set, 5 data items, uh, that is more than that. So, we have to more than more than 50% only we have to choose. So, we have set the minimum support is 50%. So, more than that uh, occurrence we have to uh, take. We have to uh, take as an example. So, for that, uh, again, we will see what are the different item sets uh, occurring after, as a two item set. So, that is one, two, one, two combination will be there. One, three combination will be there. After that, one, five combination will be there. Right? One, two. For, for one, we have to see. For two, we have to see. For three, we have to see what are the different item, uh, frequent item sets are there. So, we have got uh, at the end, uh, in the first screen, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 5, 2, 3, 2, 5 and 3, 5. So, we will see how we are getting these of the, uh, uh, these of the uh, frequent item set in the next lecture in the, uh, brief. So, here as a quick review, uh, view, we have, we have seen, uh, we have taken the uh, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 5, that is nothing but the that occurs in the 1, 2, that uh, transaction 1 and 2, uh, 1, 3 in the transaction, here uh, here it is, here it is. So, in the 2 of the transaction that is there, 1, 5 that is there in the, uh, there, in the third, uh, third transaction of the, this uh, database. Uh, like that, we have uh, uh, gathered the two item set from these of the uh, frequent item sets. So, in the first screen, these are there. In the second screen, again, we have to see, uh, we have to check for the, what are the different two item set that uh, probability is there, they are occurring together. So, for the 1, 2, there is a 1, 1, 3, 2, 1, 1, 5, 1, like that. So, more than 50% we have to take. So, we will not uh, take 1, 2 as uh, next pattern, 1, 5 is uh, next pattern. So, we will exclude these of the two item sets from this data set. So, after that, uh, what is the combination of that? After all, as a three item set, so we will get the two, three, five is there in the, uh, there as a common in these of the tra different transaction. Two, three, five, two, three and five. So, in this two, three, five, we will take as a three item set, as a frequent item set. So, uh, like that, we will get the four item set in the next example, next, next of the transactions. So, that is nothing but the, uh, uh, that is F2 is the 235, but we will see what is the uh, different uh, four item set is there. So, uh, that is not there, but we will check uh, what is there, 235, at last we are getting as a three item set. So, these were the three item sets. Uh, they are as a frequent in this transaction, in this transact data set T. So, the probability is there, the as a two, one, uh, one item set, these are the there, as a two items, uh, three item set, that, that is there, as a final, two, three, five will be there for, for as a frequent item set that has been uh, bought, that has been purchased together as a uh, transaction. So, in step Two of the a priori algorithm, they, we have to generate the rules from the different frequent item set. So, the frequent item set should not be equal to the association rules. That That is, frequent item set is nothing, uh, but th these are the probability of the items. They are uh, occurring in one transaction, in one purchase, how many times it is occurring. But association rule are different from that. So, we will not, uh, uh, we are not going to write, we are not going to uh, make some of the association rules for that. So, one more step will be needed to generate the association rules that for that each item set X, the, for each proper non-empty subset A of X will be there. So, for example, B is equal to X minus A is there, that is frequent item set and we have to, uh, we have to the, remove the uh, proper non-empty subset from that. So, A depends B is an association rules. If the confidence of A depends B, 
is greater than and equal to minimum support so in the uh, earlier example we have seen we have to calculate the we have to take the frequent items at when the minimum support will be more than 50% so if uh, we have set we have to set the minimum support but it should be less equal to or greater than that for support of a on b a depends b that support is a a uh, union b so support that then the support of the frequent item set will be equal to that confidence of a depends b in that support of a union b that will be divided by the support of a so like that we have to calculate the different sub, sub, support and confidence for the two of the items if there is a non empty subset is there from that we have to choose the frequent item set for our example so for example suppose uh, if there uh, the item set the frequent item set in the earlier example was 2 3 4 right so 2 3 4 for that minimum support is 50% so proper non empty some subset what are the non empty subset so which which are uh, which are not uh, dependent uh, which are more than which have the more than 50% confidence which uh, which have more than support uh, 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 more than fifty percent support are there, so we have to calculate the non-empty subset, which is more, greater than fifty uh, percent. So two, three, two, four, three, four, two, three, four, uh, all alone. So with with support fifty percent, so we have to calculate the support for that also. On on the basis of that, we have to take these of the non-empty uh, subsets. So the support will be there for two, three, two, three. That will be the fifty percent after the calculation. So for that two four, the support will be we will get the fifty percent. So like that so on. Uh, for the four, uh, the support will be for that will be the seventy five percent. So uh, like that we have to uh, we have to calculate the support and then we are going to make a frequent item set as a one one item set as well as for the two or three item sets. so these generates these of the association rules so after the these of the frequent item set what what will be the frequent uh, association rules so here the 2 and 3 depends on 4 so 2 and 3 if the purchase uh, that has been purchased together that depends on 4 that depends 4 so confidence will be the 100% when we are going to calculate then the confidence will be the 50% for that 100% for that like that we have to calculate uh, the confidence for all of the item sets so for 2 4 that depends on 3 the confidence will be 100% the for 3 4 that depends on 2 the confidence will be uh, as a 67% for 2 depends on 3 and 4 the confidence will be for that 67% Three depends on two four. The confidence will be sixty seven. Four depends on two three. That confidence will be sixty seven percent. So from all these rules, we have get the support. What we have set the su support is was the fifty percent as earlier. So on the support fifty percent, we are getting the confidence. These of the parameters. So from um, the this uh, this frequent item set, we have got the these of the different. confidence for the different item sets so uh, we have to generate rules to in order to obtain a depends b in order to depends a uh, depends b so we need to have the support that is uh, that is having the a union b so that is that occurs in the a and b both together and the support will be the a what is the support is there 50% and uh, a union b from there we have to get the frequent item set so we have to check these of the two properties for that if a depends b we should have the support of a union b and the uh, support uh, su support will be the a right so all the required information for confidence computation uh, has been already recorded in item set generation so we have to compute we have already computed the confidence in earlier slide 
so uh, that has been uh, recorded for the I frequent item set so we have to don't we don't have to see the uh, data set anymore so we we are not going to use the data set uh, now so this step is not as time consuming as the frequent item set generations so this is not the time consuming step we have to do for the that is more uh, uh, easy than the we have to make the frequent item sets only we have to calculate the uh, frequent uh, we have to calculate the support and uh, on the basis of support we have to we have to uh, generate the different confidence for the different uh, supports so this is finally the algorithm the a priori algorithm in that the a priori algorithm t t is the database right so t is the transactional database uh, we have to write like this then the c c1 that we, uh, that will be in it pass into the onto the database t database right so that will be initialized first then the f1 that depends on the if the uh, f uh, f dollar f is subset of c1 that f dot count that divided by n that will be the more than n equal to the minimum support so here we have to search for the number of transactions in t then uh, the for loop will be there to calculate the different uh, to search for the different item sets so here the candidate generation function will be there for to calculate that so here uh, we can see the for loop is there do the ck that depends the candidate generation uh, fk minus 1 so that is the candidate generation function so on the on the basis of that the two of the other for loops will be there for the uh, each of the scans each of the scans from the transaction as well as from the candidate key so like this that will be continue and then that fk depends on c subset of ck c dot c count uh, divided by n that is uh, greater than or equal to minimum support so here we have to uh, 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 here we have to calculate the confidence for the different item set so like this the algorithm will uh, go on so here uh, for the different scan the candidate candidate key The candidate generation function will be there to calculate uh, for the different uh, item sets. So that was all about the uh, uh, algorithm. Whatever how the algorithm um, uh, is going to apply on that. How the uh, how what are the steps are there? What are the different um, we can say different. Uh, properties are there uh, for that we for each of the scans we have to search for that we have to stand for that so on the basis of that we are going to make different frequent item set but for the a priori algorithm there should have the uh, ap, uh, there should have the frequent item set to uh, there as earlier so that was all for today's session thank you for watching like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates